Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is longest subarray with some divisible by k and it is a medium level problem. So the problem basically says that we have been given an array of size n and we have also been given a value k. Now the array will have certain values. These values can be positive, negative as well as zero. We want to find the size of the largest subarray which whose sum is divisible by this value k, right? This is our whole task. So as you can see in this particular array, if you take these values 7, 6, 1 and 4, the sum is 18 which is divisible by 3 and this is going to be the largest such subarray, right? So uh, let's see how we can solve this problem. The expected time and space complexity is O of n only and as you can see the value of k can be very big as well as the value of i, right? So let us see how we can solve this. First of all, let me just draw an array. So let's say we have an array like this, then we will have certain values in the array. So if you want to find out the largest subarray, you will always realize that there are only certain patterns in which the array can form. Let's say the array is starting from the first position. So it can be like this or it can be like this, then it can be like this or like this and then so on. Like it can keep on increasing like this. The other way can be it can start it can like end at this last position so it can be like this then like this and then like this and then so on like this right or it can be somewhere in the middle like this or a greater element like this or a greater element like this right so we can define any of these sub arrays as with the help of two properties right so one of the properties will be let me just write it down so that it is easier so we have this here so first property will be number of elements removed from left and number of elements removed from right, right. So what we are essentially trying to do here is we are uh, trying to figure out that a subarray can be defined with the help of these two numbers, right. The first number is the number of sub the number of elements removed from the left and the number of elements removed from the right. Now how does this really help us? If we fixed the number of elements removed from the left. So let's say I have fixed that I am going to remove two elements from the list. Can I figure out what is the minimum number of elements I would have to remove from the right to satisfy my constraints? In this particular case, my constraints are sum mod k should be equal to zero, right? So this constraint can be anything, but my idea is the same that I want to remove a certain number of x elements from the left and satisfying this condition, how many minimum number of elements should I remove from the right to make the subarray satisfying the given conditions. It can also be said the other way around that I want to remove these certain x elements from the right and how many elements from the left do I have to remove to make the condition satisfied, right? This is my new question now. So let me just write this as also. So my question reduces to if I remove x elements from one side, what is the minimum number of elements to remove from the other side, right? This is my new question. So let's see how we can find out the answer to this particular problem. Now in my implementation, what I have tried to do is I have traversed from the right. So traversing from the right will fix the number of elements I have to remove from the left side and then I will greedily find out what is the maximum minimum number of elements I will have to remove from the right, right. If you do the other way around, it is also correct. It's just the way of implementation, right. So let us figure out how we can solve this particular problem. Let me just take the sample test case only 276145. So we have 27614 and 5. So we don't need these two spaces right now. And the value of k in this particular case is 3, right. So what am I actually going to store at each state? Let us discuss that. So for each i, I am going to traverse first of all from right to left and from each i, I am going to store the sum, sum from i till n minus 1 mod k, right. So for each i, I am going to calculate the value of this particular thing what is the sum of the subarray starting from position i till position n minus 1 modulo k, right? This is what I am going to calculate. 
Now let's say I start traversing from the right. So the first value is 5, right? Now as soon as I encounter 5, first of all, let me just calculate what is the sum here. So the sum will be 5. Its value modulo k will be 5 mod 3. Hence it is going to be 2, right? So let me just write 2 here. And I will also maintain a suffix array or the last position array, which you can uh, like, uh, you can say it any one of them. You can call it suffix array or the last position array. So this will store for any of these values of sum, which I am calculating for each i, what is the last position in which I have seen that particular sum. So for example, suffix of 2 in this case will be, let's say this is index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. This will be equals to 5. So suffix of 2 is 5. That means the last position at which I have seen this particular sum 2 is position 5, right? These are the two information that I am calculating. Now, let's say I move on to the next element. So the total sum here is 9, 9 and if the sum is 9, 9 modulo 3 should be equal to 0. So my uh, sum or, or the modular value is 0 here. Now I have to store two things. First of all, what is the last position where I have seen this particular 0? Is this going to be equal to 4? The answer is strictly no because when I did not take any elements here at these two positions, when I have not taken any of these elements, the last position where I have, the sum will be 0. So the last position where I have seen 0 should be equals to suffix of 0 should be equal to 0 n itself, right? Because when I do not take any element, then this particular position will have some 0 and that position is n where I do not take any elements because the elements itself starts from position n minus 1. So the last position where I have seen this particular sum 0 is position n. Now you will see that if there already exists a position in this particular case what we did was 2 did not exist so we created a position for 2. But here we can see that 0 already exists. So whenever 0 already exists that means I can try to take the sum from here then I can remove that particular sum and then the total remaining number will be a multiple of 3. right? So let's say, let me just explain you this part. Let's say I have a sum x and I'm saying that this x modulo 3 is equal to, let's say 3 or 3 cannot be possible. So let's say 2, right? Now I am saying that there was some other value y, y modulo 3 and that is also equal to 2. I'm getting the same remainder, right? So if I'm getting the same remainder, now if I subtract x minus y and then take modulo 3, what should be the answer? It should be equals to 0. Why? So if you know modular arithmetic, so x mod 3, this can be expanded as x mod 3 minus y mod 3 whole mod 3. So this is z, this is 2, this is 2, so 2 minus 2 mod 3 should be equals to 0. Right. So what I am saying is I am trying to find the last position with the same remainder. If I have got it, I am going to remove that much number of elements and count the remaining elements in between. So for this n, if this is the last position where I encountered 0 and I have encountered 0 again at position 4, so what is going to be the current size of the subarray which I can have starting from this particular position i. So that will be equals to n minus i. Why i minus i? Because n is the last position where I have seen the same sum. So n and minus i, i is the current position. Since I do not want to include n and I want to include i, I don't have to add anything or subtract anything from here. So in this particular case, the size of the subarray will be 2. Why? Because the value of n is I believe 6 and the value of i is 4, so it is equal to 2, right? And that is definitely correct. So you can clearly see that if I start from this position 4 and I, if I take the size of the subarray equal to 2, the sum will be 9, 5 plus 4, 9 and that is indeed a multiple of 3 or it is divisible by 3, right? So what I'm saying is, let me just write it now. So we are calculating, we are calculating at each i the sum of elements from i to n minus 1 modulo k, right? Now, if if this is the first time I have seen this sum, I will update my my math math 
with this position else else what i am going to do is in the other case i am going to calculate i find the size of the sub array since you will see since this particular map or suffix array is only storing the last position right the last position in which i encountered this particular sum you will see that it is always going to find me the maximum size of the sub array right so you see that uh, let's say i find some two here some two here and some two here for this particular position this is the last position so i am going to take a sub array starting from here and ending just before here similarly when i encounter a two again i am going to take a sub array starting from here and ending just before here right so the, you see this is what i am trying to do here now similarly if we proceed further now the sum is equals to 9 i add 1 to it so it will be equals to 10 and the modulo value will be 1 so since 1 is not present before so suffix of 1 will be equals to the current position that is 3 now i move on further now my sum is 9 i add 6 to it so 9 plus 6 will be equals to uh, i believe 15 sorry 10 plus 6 is equals to 16 right so 16 mod 3 will be equals to 1 itself again okay. right so it does not change right now you will see that since i have encountered the same sum same sum before also i'll try to find its last position so its last position here was 3 my current position is 2 so my sub array answer is 1 you see how it is 1 because i am currently at position 2 if i take a sub array of size 2 uh, size 1 from here it is 6 and it is definitely divisible by 3 Right. So now my current sum is sixteen. Now I add seven to it. So four, five, six, seven. It will be equals to twenty-three, I believe. Right. So sixteen plus one, two, four. Yeah, twenty-three. So twenty-three mod this particular value three will be equals to two. Right. So what I am doing is I am taking the current sum that is twenty-three and then taking its mod with three that is going to give me two. So if I have encountered this two or not before, I have definitely encountered this two at position five. So if I go to position five, I see I have the same two. So what I do, I take the last position minus the current position that is four here, right? And that is indeed true. It is saying that if I make a sub array of size four starting from this particular position, the sum will be a multiple of three. So if I take this particular array, you will see seven plus six plus one plus four. Let me just calculate it. So six plus four is ten, and seven plus one is eight. So the total sum is eighteen, which is indeed a multiple of three. right so you see how it is working let me just move on one step further so it was 23 24 25 this will be uh 25 sum here and it will give me one remainder so from here i see the last position of one is this one so this particular uh, position will give me 3 minus 0 that is 3 itself that means if i start a sub array starting from this particular position of size 3 it should also give me the uh sum which is divisible by 3 so this is equals to 7 plus 2 is equals to 9 and 9 plus 6 is 15 right so you see this is also divisible by 3 and indeed this method is correct so this was all about this particular problem i have tried to give a very detailed explanation about this particular problem i have tried to give you detailed insights of how you should actually think about this problem right and if you look at the code the code is very very straight forward it's not at all difficult so what i am doing is i have initialized my sum with zero i have created a suffix map if you want the complexity to be strictly o of n you can take an ordered map here as well so let me just take an ordered map it should also work and i have initialized my suffix of 0 with n because n will be the last position at which my sum modulo k is equal to 0 right it should be equal to 0 because i have not taken any elements at all now i have initialized my answer with 0 i am starting with position n minus 1 and taking the reverse for loop if you want you can take a forward for loop that's completely fine as well and uh, What I've done is at each position I'm taking sum, I'm taking array of i mod k, then I'm adding plus k to it, and then taking modulo k. So why adding this particular plus k? Uh, if you have done modular arithmetic a little bit, then you would realize that uh, if I have the current modulo in negative, that is, it is less than zero. Let's say I have minus x, right? So I can try to convert it into positive by adding k and then taking modulo k, right? why does this work because no matter which value which multiple of k i add to any value the val the final value modulo k should be the same so just to keep it positive i have added this particular k here now if i have not encountered this particular sum before i update the position of the sum with i otherwise i set my answer as maximum of answer comma suffix of sum this will give me the position at which i have encountered that particular sum minus i so 
this i should be included and this position should not be included that is why i am adding or i am not adding or subtracting anything from here right so if both of the positions were to be included i would have to add one here right and if both of the positions will have to be neglected i will have to subtract one from here but since one has to be added and one has to be removed that is why i do it like this so at the end i can just return my answer value and this would be the final solution so let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and this solution is absolutely correct so you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is correct i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really really helps the youtube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems so that is it for today till the next video drops keep coding stay safe bye bye